partitioning, backfilling, and impotency? Wow, are we talking about a basic data engineering project? Yes, that's right, in this series we're gonna create a small, but a real case project to give you a better understanding of how data teams are typically using Airflow and what you should know. You will have hands-on experience in creating your own Airflow pipeline and grasping these three frequently used concepts. So the plan is to pull open weather API data, store it in the data lake as Sparky files on Google Cloud Platform, insert it into the staging table first, and then into the production data warehouse. But also I'm going to share with you an amazing approach on how to spin up Airflow instance easily on any OS with a few steps only. I know that is a major bottleneck for beginners when everything you want is just to play around with Airflow, see how it works and looks, but instead you're freaking out on loading the packages, figuring out virtual environments, components, dockerization, ports, etc. For a beginner, it could be simply a nightmare and overkill. So I found a few click solution without any DevOps hustle with just one condition, to install Docker on your machine. It's easy and link below. And you don't even need to install IDE, really, no kidding. The solution I found is so cool that you don't even need any IDE because it will be smoothly available inside the browser. The platform is called Coder, an open source cloud development environment you download and host anywhere. It deploys in seconds and provisions the infrastructure, IDE, language and tools you want. I'm happy to share it with you as it's absolutely free, a few clicks to launch and super user-friendly. So let's begin. First, make sure your Docker is running. You can install Docker by this link and just like follow the instructions, it's pretty straightforward and easy. And make sure it's launched on your machine. So when you're sure that your Docker is running, go to the installation guide over here and you can just simply copy this command and paste it into your terminal. And after that, you just need to start the server. You can copy this command, call the server, paste it. So now your server is running. Just a small note over here, copy this address from the log so you can log into the existing coder environment afterwards. After that, navigate to localhost and just create your initial user. And boom, the platform is up and running. Now click the templates, create template, choose a starter template, pick Docker containers. Let's call it Docker Airflow. Click create template. Now it's gonna be provisioned, just give it a second. So now we need to edit it just a little bit. Over here in the Terraform file, all you need to do is just to insert a small piece of code into the current setup. Well, here is a trick for me. I've created an Airflow module in Coder Registry for you to be able to spin it up quickly. And here how it looked before. This is the custom code that I've contributed to the project. But now it's the part of the modules over here. After that, click Build and Publish. Now let's go back and let's create a workspace from the template. Click Create Workspace. Let's name it Refresh the page and after that you can see this tab Airflow, which is the access to your Airflow instance. You can open it in a new tab. And here it is, your Airflow instance right here, right in front of you, fully set up, no DevOps hustle. And it's not just Airflow, check out like other modules available in the registry, like for example, Jupyter Notebooks and etc. So now you just need to insert your username. Here is our Airflow instance ready to be edited. And if you click over here, it's gonna open your IDE inside the browser. Open the workspace the name of your project, Airflow. Okay, here it is. Also, you can click over here and it's gonna automatically open the Visual Studio IDE if you have it installed on your machine. So you can run your code or inside your IDE locally or you can edit it within the browser. So now once your environment is ready and steady, let's make two things to set up your Airflow. We need to set up the connection to Google Cloud Platform. We'll need a GCP service account. It's like a credential to access Google Platform programmatically. So first you need to create a GCP account. It has free credits for newbies, so don't worry about the cost. You can read about it here. Link is below. After, go to your GCP console, navigate to the I am an admin service account, create service account, let's name it tutorial, continue, let's grant it a role editor, 
continue, done. After that, let's go inside of it, click keys, add a key, choose JSON, create. So as you can see, it downloaded the JSON file into your in, onto your machine. Keep this file secure as it provides the API access to your GCP resources. Now let's go back to your Airflow and in the tab connections, find Google Cloud default, click edit, and under key file JSON, insert the whole JSON file contents that you downloaded before. Let's copy, paste it. Yeah, it's a pretty long, long one. After that, let's click test. Connection successfully tested. Okay, all good. Now let's click save. Now we have a connection to our GCP account. And one more small thing, we need to set up the variables. As it's a good practice to store commonly used data across different DAGs and make your code dry. Don't repeat yourself. So let's go back into our GCP. And if you haven't created the project before, just create it. And you're gonna need the ID of your project over here. Let's create a variable. Uh, I call it like BigQuery data warehouse project valuable. Let's paste it over here. Click save. Also, let's create a variable for the Google Cloud bucket, the name of it. Let's call it GCS bucket and let's call it the weather tutorial. And the last piece, we actually need to insert over here the weather API key. I'm not going to show how to create the open weather key. It's pretty straightforward. Just like go to this website. You can find the uh, one called API register for it. And under the API keys, you're going to have your keys available. Just click it over here and paste it as a new variable. Weather API key. Paste your value, save. Other important thing that we need to do is to create our data sets inside our BigQuery. For this, we are gonna create our STG weather data set. Cool, let's switch now to the coding part. So now let's go back to our IDE. First of all, we need to create a folder called DAGs and inside of it, let's create a first DAG called data ingestion. And I like to start with writing the generic outline of our first DAG. Default arguments over here. So owner, depends, start date, email and failure, retries, and etc. After that, let's name our DAG. We're gonna call it the weather data ingestion and gonna pass our default arguments. Next, let's outline the steps you need your DAG to perform. The first step is like to fetch the weather data task and store it into our uh, cloud storage. After that, we're gonna transfer the data from the cloud storage to the BigQuery staging. After that, we're gonna create a table uh, with schema in, in case it was not created before. And after that, we're gonna pass the staging data into the production. Next, let's define the global variables that we would like to use here, uh, pulling from variables that we've defined before. I'm gonna be specifying those in capital letters is, as is one of the best practices. So it's going to be our API key that we are getting from the variable weather API key, then, then our bucket, project ID, query dataset name, and also the staging dataset name, the SQL pass, which is going to be the pass of our SQL files, latitude and longitude of our particular location as we are dealing with the uh, weather data for, let's say, New York City. Now let's start with the first task called fetch weather, fetch weather data task. For that, we're going to use the Python operator as we are going to create a function which is actually pulling the data from weather API. So fetch weather data task. Here we're defining the our Python callable, which is a function that we're going to create right now. So our data we're going to pull from the API, save it into the Parquet file format. Parquet file is typically one of the best practices because Parquet stores data in a columnar format. Each column is stored together and it's better for compression. It allows query engines to skip reading unnecessary data while processing queries. And it's kind of optimized for analytics workloads. Fetch weather API and we are defining the URL from where we're gonna pull our data with latitude and longitude parameters as well as API key. And uh, for here we need a Unix timestamp for a particular date. That's why we're gonna create a separate function, which is gonna look like this one. We're gonna get the current date 
and uh, like convert uh, to a daytime object with the time set to midnight and after that gonna convert it to unix timestamp after that we're gonna make the request with the requests library and from json gonna pull the data from the data field and convert it into the pandas we are gonna create an extra column in non-unix timestamp format define our file name after that we're gonna push the file name itself to the xcom xcom is just it stands for the cross communication it's kind of like a cache or a buffer between the tasks uh, where you can store a small amount of data which is like very important next we're gonna upload the file we're gonna use the cloud storage hook it's using default GCP connection, Google Cloud default, which we defined before. We are gonna state the upload and pass it our bucket, our file name and our data in the parquet format over here. So GCS to BigQuery staging task, our BigQuery operator, defining the name of it, the bucket, the source objects. If you remember, like we are pulling the file name from the XCOMs, finding our staging data, data set from the BigQuery, create this position, create if needed. It means that we are automatically created the table for us without the previous provision, write this position, write truncate, which means that we are gonna be dropping the data completely before uploading the fresh batch. Uh, also defining the time partitioning here, defining our connection ID, the default one, and of course the source format, the parquet. The next we're going to create a target table, like the production table, with the logic create if not exists and explicitly stating the schema. We're gonna use the struct data type. It's a bit, it's a bit more advanced than standard types, but it allows you to group multiple data elements into a single logical unit. It's kind of like a dictionary in Python. It's gonna look as following create table with schema bigquery create empty table operator defining the name of it the project id data set our time partitioning and uh, here we are defining our schema field and as you can see our record type which stands for the struct data type it looks a little bit bulky we can for sure like extract it into a separate json file or something and lastly we are creating a staging to production uh, task which pulls the data from staging and absorbs it into the our data warehouse we're gonna use the bigquery insert job operator defining our project id and as you can see we have a configuration for this one we're, we're gonna use a separate SQL file with our absurd logic uh, and passing some variables like project ID, table name, etc. It's gonna create the table if needed and yeah, defining our destination table. We're gonna create a separate folder as SQL, absurd table.sql file. And here's our logic. So we're gonna merge into our production table. Uh, our staging data when the data is managed then we're gonna update the values in other case we're gonna be inserting the new values from the staging one so you can see our code over here and let's just trigger the DAG I was running that before In order for us to make this pipeline with the option of backfilling, meaning populating for the previous periods, we just need to add a two little tweaks. In our default args dictionary, let's add one more backfill date and we're gonna specify the 2nd of March for it. The next step is actually to pull the backfill date from our default arguments into our fetch weather data function and let's pass it over here, backfill date. As well as here, it's gonna take in the date variable and simple if else logic. So if the date is none, then we're gonna get the current date. In other case, the backfill date. So let's trigger our DAG one more time. Let's double check if we do have it in the in our BigQuery weather daily data and let's preview the data. Yep, now we have the two rows. And the second one is for the 2nd of March. Just FYI, idempotence is a funky word that often hooks people, but it means if we run the pipeline repeatedly, it will produce the same result. So to stop your project, you can just click stop in Coder UI, and after that, you can clean up your Docker containers inside the Docker. In case you've been shutting off your Docker and uh, just relaunched it, you can rerun the Coder server, you can run the Coder login and insert your URL well defined before. Here you have it, dear, simple yet helpful pipeline at your fingers and a whole easy to launch coder platform to play around with Airflow DAGs without any DevOps hustle. Please tell me which topics you want me to cover next and leave your comments below. Until then, stay curious.